Hey friends and welcome to another episode of Piano TV. Now I have every good intention of doing holiday themed videos or at the very least one video but the month has gotten away from me and here we are I'm doing a totally not holiday themed video but something that I was thinking about this morning that I thought might be helpful to you. So the idea is that when you're learning an instrument on your own like say for example the piano the purpose of this channel it's really uh, good, like it's nice to have solo hobbies. I really like spending lots of quiet time with myself, just um, just practicing. Um, but the challenge is oftentimes for people accountability. So if you're in a group project, like say you're in a band, you have to practice because you have the accountability of the group. They're counting on you. You don't want to be the one to let everyone down or, you know, showing up to work. Um, you, people expect you to do it. So even if you don't want to do it, you show up, you get there, you get it done. But when you're learning something by yourself for yourself, you don't have that built in accountability. So it is entirely up to you. It is a hundred percent on you, whether or not you show up to the piano. And the problem with that is that most people aren't motivated enough to maintain that long term. I mean, I'm not either. So uh, I've gone through, I mean, I've spent the better part of 20 years practicing piano, but it's uh, probably no more than that. I've spent, what am I talking about? I spent almost 30 years of my life practicing piano, but um, there's ups and downs. So there's times where I've been super motivated because I have pressing deadlines and things like that. And then there's been times where I'm just like, meh, don't really feel like it. Um, and the thing that seems to make the biggest difference in terms of staying with it for the long term, keeping consistent and not just having these bursts of motivation followed by months of basically nothing is some kind of accountability. Some, something to make it not just you sitting by yourself practicing, which it is going to be most of the time anyway. But if you have some kind of accountability built into it, um, something that you have to show up for, something that you, you have to report to, um, can make all the difference between sticking with it in the long term and just, you know, riding the first wave of motivation and dropping off the map once that fades away, which it always unfortunately does. So I've got seven things that I want to suggest to you. Um, different kinds of ideas. Now, this is not the kind of thing where I want you to go do all seven things. I feel like even if you just picked one of these seven things, you would experience like a really big, nice boost in your accountability. So um, don't let perfect be the enemy of the good here where you try to implement all the things at once and then it, you know, you go out like a supernova and like a big burst. Um, let's just like pick one thing, start there and go from there. So first and foremost, this is a, uh, this is something that I've experienced with people who um, participate, uh, who are participating in my beginner course and who I've done coaching with. It's to film yourself playing your piano pieces every week. And now they have to do this to send to me for feedback, like if they're my coaching student or whatever it is. So you, if you're filming, you don't necessarily have someone who's going to be looking at that aside from yourself. So there's an extra layer of accountability that's missing, but on the plus side, um, you can create a little bit of a chain of, of practice. So if you're working on three pieces a week and every week you dedicate like, I don't know, one practice session a week, like a half hour practice session, just to getting like a, a a few good takes of whatever pieces you're working on, whatever state they're in, whether they're um, just like totally new and kind of like chunky or they're well-developed, whatever state they're in, you just dedicate yourself to recording it. After, you know, maybe a month of doing this, all of a sudden you've got four weeks in a row of recording. So then maybe on the fifth week, you're kind of like, eh, you might have enough good value from the first four weeks. Like you built up a little bit of a chain that you're going to go ahead and do the fifth week just because of that. Um, and then so on and so forth. I find that anytime I, I start a chain, like a chain style habit, um, it, it increases my accountability more in the long term um, and, and can keep me doing something in the long term. So for example, I have a habit of doing a weekly review and I do not do this every single week, but I would say out of 52 weeks of the year, I probably do at least 45 weeks a year of weekly reviews. And I am so entrenched with this habit. I've been doing it for probably two or three years now. Um, and I, I have such a consistent streak with it that the idea of not doing it seems kind of crazy and wild to me. And every week that I miss it, I feel weird that I've missed it. So if you can create that kind of chain with yourself in terms of either filming with video, your piano practice, or just audio recordings, then I feel like you would have the opportunity to create that kind of chain for yourself, that accountability chain. Okay. So point number two, 
Uh, and this is kind of like what I was just talking about, but commit to doing a weekly piano practice review. So the, the reason that doing a weekly review of my life helps keep me productive, well, for a couple of reasons. Um, I, I look at all the things, okay, I make a list, this is what I accomplished. And then I make a list of, this is what I wanted to do, but didn't. And then I make a list of things I wanna do for the upcoming week. And then I make uh, like a, a couple statements about anything that I happened to learn that week. If there was any like life lesson that came up, any problems that I solved, um, it could be like technical, emotional, mental, anything like that. I try to keep it pretty open-ended because I don't um, like narrowing myself in too many boxes with too much structure. But going through the process of a weekly review gives you um, a way to, to measure your own progress. You can see, oh, okay, so I practiced about this much this week. I did this, this, and this, and this is what I want to do going forward. It, it sharpens your focus on the front end and the back end. It sharpens your focus on what you've accomplished. So you don't get that feeling of like, uh, did I even do anything? And it sharpens your focus on what you're about to accomplish. So instead of sitting down to practice and like, oh, I'm just, you know, doing whatever. You're like, I am doing this, this, and this, which I find really, really helpful for accountability purposes. And I've been doing that in my life for years. So number three, Probably not a surprise. Take private lessons. This is like an oldie but a goodie, right? Um, showing up for a weekly piano lesson is probably the best way to be accountable because you have to show up. You're paying someone money to give you feedback on the things that you're working on. If, uh, you know, it's a waste of money. So that's, that's one side of it. It's like, oh, I don't want to like waste my money by showing up for a lesson that I'm not prepared for. But there's also the social pressure of it too. It's like, oh, I don't want to fail my teacher or like, I don't want my teacher to be like, ah, this loser, not practicing again. We don't really think that, but but you know, that that's how it goes in your head. So I don't need to talk about this one too much. Most of you already probably understand that going to private lessons every week is probably the best accountability procedure that you could do. And partly because it, it makes piano social. Um, or at least a little bit more social than it would otherwise be. Number four, join a piano learning group or forum. So one thing that's kind of accidentally happened from a beginner course that I'm running right now is we created a group forum because there were there were too many people to um, like manage in the little format, like the kind of little chat format that we had originally set out to do. So um, I've created a forum. And the nice thing about having a forum is you are, uh, this particular one I'm thinking about, like the beginner one, is that there's a group of people who are um, learning like you. So you're not, it's another way to not feel alone in what you're doing. Now you can take this a step further. I like that people in the, the forum that I've created are doing progress logs and, and weekly, weekly updates and videos. So the things that I've already been talking about, they're actually posting it on the private forum. And that's like a whole extra layer of accountability because not only do you have your own expectation to meet, it's like, okay, I'm gonna post this video for myself. It's like, no, other people are gonna see if I pull this off or if I fail. And if you start posting every week and then all of a sudden you stop, people are gonna notice. So that builds in a lot more accountability um, just because it's uh, because it's more social. Um, but there are other forums on the internet too. So I really like um, Piano World's forums. They have, um, they do like recitals and things that you can participate in. So those are, those are other ways to just feel like you're a part of a community that you're not just an island all by yourself. That can be really helpful as well. Um, number five, I like doing this one, book an exam or, an, or a performance. Maybe a little harder to do this during COVID. Not so much with exams, performances maybe. I like to, um, when I would teach in studio lessons, we would usually plan our exams at the end of each year. So at the start of the year, my students would begin the year knowing that by the end of the year that they would have an exam to do. And uh, even though we didn't necessarily book it, I, you can't book them that far in advance here. It depends on what kind of exams you're taking. Um, we always knew that it was coming. So we would plan, okay, we're going to do an exam in six months. We're setting the date. It's happening. It's, it's done. And how could that not motivate you? Because it gives you a deadline. You can't just... Um, you know, go with the flow and learn your pieces indefinitely. So you need to have a certain set of pieces and a certain set of technique and your ear training skills and your sight reading skills at a certain level by X date. That is incredibly motivating. Same thing with performances. So my band would book performances um, 
even during times when we hadn't really practiced or we were doing different things, we weren't rehearsing, um, we were doing more writing, whatever, we'd book a performance and what it maybe would be like three weeks in the future. We're like, okay, well, that means we have to somehow like pull together enough music to do this. And that would get, get us way more progress than if we hadn't booked the performance at all. The performance kept us tight and, and regular with our practice, um, whereas otherwise we might not have learned that extra cover song or tried that um, experimental writing jam session thing or whatever it was that we did. So having dates on the calendar, super, super great for accountability. Um, number six, this is something I've experimented with on a personal business level and also with piano, um, but to create a small mastermind group. So. You can do this on your own. If you know two other people who um, who you know are learning the piano, uh, or three, like I like mastermind groups of three to four people, um, but they're learning the piano. They don't necessarily have to be at your level, but you're all learning it together. What you can do is get together every week or two, have like a you know one hour session where you talk about your progress. Maybe you share your pieces with each other too. So every week someone brings something to show. Um, maybe you you share one piece you're working on, your friend shares another piece they're working on, and, and you all give each other support, encouragement, and feedback. Um, masterminds only work if everyone involved is really committed. So if someone's like flaky and they're not showing up to meetings and stuff, you got to kick them out and have people who are really in into it because that's going to create that high level of accountability because you do not want to be the flaky person. You don't want to be in a group of three or four people and be that third or fourth person who's like rescheduling all the time. You're like, oh, sorry guys, I forgot to practice again. So it, it's a really great way to make friends and also opt in um, to your to your own development at the piano. Um, again, making it more social uh, is huge. And it's really fun because it's, you can connect to people in a different way. I mean, this is a good thing to do in any kind of thing that you're learning. Like if you're learning about business or if you're learning about drawing or things, having a group of people that you're doing it with just makes it so much more fun above everything else, even above accountability. So finally, my seventh point, and this is a testament to my type A type personality, set yearly and quarterly goals for, um, for your piano practice and review them regularly. So the point of setting goals isn't to achieve them, which maybe seems like a weird thing to say, but it's to have you constantly orienting your orient, orienting. That's the one I was going to say orientating. Uh, that reminds me of high school classrooms, orienting yourself towards, um, like, like you're always going somewhere. It's, it's kind of like, um, it's like a plane, like a, I don't know a lot about this, but I'm going to try a plane is like in a constant state of recalibration. So, um, we go a little bit this way, but we got to adjust and go a little bit this way. And, and there's always these like micro adjustments happening. And, um, so the same is true of goals. If you set a goal, it, it's cool if you manage to reach it, but it's more about like, okay, the goal gives you somewhere to go. Even if you end up somewhere different, that's still fine. It just, it gives you something to, to work towards instead of, having your practice be so like random, basically. Um, and I, I have done videos on this channel about um, goal setting at the piano, so I don't want to talk about it too much, but this ties into the weekly reviews as well. If you have, if you combine weekly reviews with larger overarching goals that work together, then um, that that's just a way to be personally accountable. So these aren't social things, they're personal things where you're going to get intrinsic value out of doing these things and it's also a way to remain accountable to yourself. Um, if you practice piano without goals, I mean, you can still have fun, but it, a lot of people tend to go through a phase of what's the point. And oftentimes that phase of what's the point is paired with stopping practicing entirely. So setting goals is a way to reconnect with that point regularly. And um, I encourage you, if you set goals, to review them at least once a month too, to see, okay, are you on track? Do you need to recalibrate? Um, do you still connect with the goals you set and so on? Because uh, it's not really that effective. I mean, it's helpful to set goals and then forget them, but it's better if you set goals and then review them. So those are seven ideas to help you just maintain your, um, your time at the piano so you don't drop off the map and uh, give up. So I encourage you to pick one from this list, give it a try, let me know how it goes. And if I don't catch up with you guys before Christmas, Merry Christmas, and I'll talk to you soon.